Hey, I'm Sandy McKenzie, McKenzie Lumber Mill. Today, I'm gonna make a charcuterie board. Let's go to the sawmill. or spalted maple. People say, why is it so expensive? The reason why is because it takes years. We bought the maple trees, we let them lay in a log for four to five years, and then they start to rot, so they start to get spalted. At a certain point, you don't want them punky, so you have to find the right time where they're nice and spalted, but the wood isn't punky. So in about four to five years, you cut boards. So now you have spalted maple boards. After that, you have to let them dry roughly about a year for every inch. So if it's an inch thick board, it takes about a year. But it's still not down to the proper percentage. So then they have to be kiln dried for another four to five months. So you're looking at about a six year process before you can even sell the wood and the wood is ready for this charcuterie board. And then you've got all your labor on top of that, your, your kiln, like putting it in and out of the kiln and sawing it at the sawmill and going to the bush and getting the logs and bringing them back to the sawmill. There's a lot of factors in getting wood. That is why it's expensive. I got some spalted maple here. I'm gonna cut the ends off on my miter saw, and then I'm gonna use the bandsaw. It's a new bandsaw. I used to like the old one. It had lots of wiggle room, and I could easily make curves, but we'll see. See how it goes. Hey, baby girl. Out of the way, girls. Okay. So I'm gonna change the angle up on this. You just squeeze the lever and move it. And I can see I've got my light on. I can kind of see the angle there. And it's nothing scientific. I didn't like, oh, you gotta do a perfect 33 or 90. I just hand drew it. Okay, ready? That's a lot harder than Eastern White Cedar. So I'm just, I just hand drew a little handle and we'll cut that out on the bandsaw.
We haven't been shopping. We haven't been shopping. We bought a whole bunch of sandpaper and it's crappy. So I went on to Amazon and I ordered a whole bunch coming in on Monday. But that does not help me today. And I'm probably gonna quickly get frustrated. <laughs> router with the roundover bit where would I be I don't know here's a router has a bit of a roundover I did my rough sanding with 80 grit sandpaper. I'm going to spray it with water and then I'm going to do my final sanding with 500 grit. Oh man. <laughs> Nothing. I need a different straight bottom. Oh, there we go. I'm back. Okay, that was very difficult. <laughs> I'm gonna put it in the sun and let it dry. And now I am coming back with the final sanding. Let's go. silky smooth and I've already done the back side I don't want to bore you so this is ready to go um, it's really nice and silky smooth you could use butcher block it's a food grade safe wax that you can use on charcuterie boards or you could use mineral oil stay tuned next week I'm releasing a video. I'm gonna to try to make my own wax. We have an apiary here. We have a bee yard. I'm gonna take some beeswax and I'm gonna mix it with mineral oil and make my own paste and wax. I'll go head to head with butcher block and mineral oil and see what I like the best. So stay tuned, that, that video's next week. This one, I'm gonna take it a little step further. I'm just gonna put a little wood burning here and I'm gonna do it the easy way. Let's get lit. This is food grade safe. And so is my new product, Dragon's Breath. So excited. It is a jelly. You put it on the board, nothing happens. Nothing at all. You let it dry and then you heat activate it with a heat gun and it magically turns into a wood burning. So I'm gonna open up this Dragon's Breath and you don't need very much. So I'm just gonna take a little bit off the lid. I like to use a lid as a palette. And I just cut a quick little stencil out on my Cricut. There, done. And then I'm going to add a little bee. And I have a stencil of a bee. Thank you. I got this stencil from Amazon. I'm just going to put this B on it. So again, you don't need very much. You don't want it to run under the stencil. And you stipple up and down, pounce it up and down. And 
remove it. I might use this little this little piece coming off here too. There. It takes about 15 minutes to dry and then I'm going to activate it with a heat gun. Done. I have some shellac. It's food grade safe. Dries quickly, non-toxic. Oh, it's just popping. Look at that wood grain. Just popping right out. I'm so happy with this. So the end grains, you really have to douse them really well. This is where it gets soaked up. The moisture um, comes out of the ends. So you really want to make sure that you seal it really well. I'm going to put another coat on this in 45 minutes when it's dry. Then I'll do the back. Hey, and if you like this video, do me a solid and check out my next one. Love you, bye.